Hello boys and girls, Itay here. We are uh, in the Embryo E175 uh, by Phil there and uh, it's Prepare 3D V4 and today I want to talk to you guys about the system, the hydraulic system in the uh, E-Jet family by Embraer and it's going to be the same for E170, 175, 190, 195 and it's just going to be a very basic overview just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with. Obviously, if you want some more in-depth, just go into the official literature. So, uh, we have three hydraulic systems. We can access it and uh, see it in the MFD system hydraulic syn synoptic. Uh, so, each system we can see uh, the pressure and the quantity in the reservoir. Um, it just changes color when it's when it needs refilling and it changes color to amber uh, so it's 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 going to be cyan when it's low quantity here and uh, it's going to uh, be amber when the pressure is uh, too low uh, if it's actually commanded on so right now it's not commanded on and each system also has a uh, temperature indicator quick note if the system um, if the if the reservoirs are too cold uh, below uh, negative 18 Celsius. Uh, there is a, a warm-up procedure for the hydraulic because otherwise the viscosity of the fluids are not going to allow for good operation. So we would, there's a procedure to warm it up. I don't think I'm going to cover it today. So the three systems together, the idea is that each one of them on, on their own uh, can provide us with sufficient controlling of the engine in flight in the very basic axis. So even system 3, which in the synoptic... Uh, by the way, these are just lists. It doesn't show you if any one of them of the components here is failed. So these are the components that sit on the uh, each hydraulic system. So it's just for reference. If the rudder upper is failed, we would not see it necessarily. Um, so we but each one of the uh, each one of the systems could help us control the airplane. So even system three, which is by far the smallest, uh, it has an elevator, a rudder, and an and, and an aileron. So we could control the airplane uh, using it. Uh, and uh, we have similar, just the basics. So even in system one, you can see we have an elevator, a rudder component. Uh, and uh, multifunction spoilers that can provide roll. So, right as it is, we have sufficient control. And systems one and two have brakes. So the outboard brakes are on system one. System two would have the inboard brakes. Um, so if yeah, I can probably show you this real quick. So we have on the main gear, uh, we have uh, two wheels on each. Uh, gear so system one controls the brakes for the outer two uh, wheels and then the system two is the brakes for the inner two wheels so uh, and of course system two also you can see that there is an elevator an aileron multifunction spoilers um, and uh, yeah so uh, basically uh, we can we can control the entire airplane using each individual system. Uh, if we have two, amazing. If we have three, oh great, we're good. Um, emergency parking brake is fed by both uh, systems. We said both the brake the brakes sit partly on system one, partly on system two, and the brake the emergency parking brake accumulator is fed by both. The landing gear is lowered by the landing, both the landing gear and the um, uh, the control, the nose wheel steering are both controlled by uh, engine uh, two, uh, by excuse me, by uh, system number two, um, and the landing gear can be assisted by the PTU. I'm not going to spend too much talking about the APU, uh, the PTU, excuse me, the PTU power transfer unit is a pump that uses um, uses pressure from system one to and fluid from system two to assist uh, with the landing gear. So even if uh, we're starting to lose uh, uh, pressure in uh, system uh, two and 
as long as we have at least 12% uh, quantity over here, we can still use it to lower the gear or, or raise the uh, raise or lower the gear, the landing gear, uh, to get the gear down, we have an emergency system, which I'm not going to cover today. Uh, each system has two pumps, okay, for the, uh, for the engines, we have the engine driven pump, okay, and, um, so, sorry, that's the engine driven pump for each engine, and an AC pump, an AC electrical pump, um, as a standby, so, uh, it's it's called ACMP one and ACMP two. System three is not associated with any engine, and therefore we just have two ACMPs: ACMP three A and three B. Three A is the normal one to use. Uh, therefore, it has only an on-off position, which we're going to see in a second. Uh, and ACMP three B, which kicks in in case uh, system A. Uh, uh, pump A failed for some reason. Okay, um, speaking of uh, the pumps, so the engine driven pump um, would feed the system normally, and for the um, ACMP pumps for one and two, they would kick in, they would get into, uh, they would turn themselves on, it's all done in the background, we don't need to do anything, they would turn themselves on if the uh, engine driven pump is failed in flight and um, and um, if uh, and even if the EDP is not failed if um, we are selecting any flaps other than zero so if we're selecting flaps one it would automatically turn on the system to uh, uh, turn on the ACMP and that's to just make sure that there's no transient let's say the engine does fail it means but if we have flaps or slats no uh, one or more it would mean that uh, potentially we're about to take off or land so the system is pressurizing the ACMPs to help us prevent transient um, hydraulic pressures in case it, the engine does fail surprisingly we would still have continuous hydraulic supply Okay, um, so and on the ground, um, those and those um, pumps would uh, turn on automatically um, if uh, um, the flaps are selected to any position other than zero, and uh, thrust levers are in takeoff thrust, and ground speed is greater to than 50 knots. So once again, system is during the takeoff roll is preparing itself for a case of an engine failure. System 2 is uh, rather special. Actually, let's see if we can... Uh, so, um, System 2 is rather special. It has another criteria for the ACMP2. Uh, so, it does exactly as I said about ACMP1, but it also, to serve us in, in case of we if we want to do single engine taxi, as long as, as, lo as, long as engine 1 is uh, on, and um, as long as engine one is running, and um, um, we have uh, dropped the, we have turned off the parking brake, then uh, ACMP two automatically turns on. If we tr if we um, set the parking brake, it would remain on for another six minutes, and after those six minutes elapse, the ACMP two uh, shuts off automatically, and that's just to uh, show you that just to be ready for um, for a single engine taxi because as we said uh, engine 2 is uh, uh, sorry system 2 is the one controlling the nose wheel steering and partly the brakes um, so uh, we can taxi on on engine 1 running only and system two being in auto would just automatically turn itself on. That being said, uh, in some companies, including mine, we, on our own, we would turn the system to, uh, whenever we don't have both engines running, we would turn the ACMPs on, um, would force them on, essentially. So, talking about the controls, these were the indications. These are the controls. This is the hydraulic panel here in the... Um, in the uh, 
overhead panel so we can see uh, the the two s the and the system number one sister num system number two the PTU automatic function right now it's in auto so it's enabled so are the ACMPs and system three we have the two pumps system A on and off and system B off auto and on um, this is the this is the configuration we would find the airplane when we first come to the to the airplane so when it's when we're thinking we're about to uh, start the engine actually let's get the APU on just so we can actually get ready to start the engine so I can show you stuff and this just bothered my eye sorry so uh, when we're getting ready to start we could just start the engines on uh, on just like that so now we're fully ready to start in my company we also do this and that okay so we're forcing ACMPs to on okay um, even though once we have engine one started as we said uh, the EDP would uh, take over it would because we forced the ACMP to also be uh, be on they would both provide pressure uh, theoretically system 2 could have been on auto but nevertheless we uh, turn it to on anyway um, engine pump shutoff valve so the it doesn't actually con the, the guarded switch here it doesn't actually control the um, the uh, EDP itself the EDP runs continuously it's mechanically connected to the engine what it does uh, is uh, okay it would s disconnect just the hydraulic shutoff valve so we're just cutting the hydraulic fluid supply to upstream of the uh, hydraulic um, the the electric uh, driven pump okay so we've turned on the hydraulic pumps we have uh, um, a, an advisory message hydraulic pumps not auto uh, and that's what because we forced the EDPs uh, excuse me we forced the ACMPs to on we can see that in both sides the ACMPs are providing pressure to the system and of course 3A as it always does and we can see the green indication that the entire system is being uh, fed correctly now let's start an engine So engine two is uh, as engine one is uh, spooling up. Door packs forward open because we have uh, the message is coming up because uh, we have the door open and one engine is is uh, on. And as we can see now, the uh, the engine driven pump is uh, for engine one is working and it's taken over okay and the ACMP is still on because we forced it on okay but since if we turn it to auto we, we wouldn't but if we turn it to auto uh, you can see how it looks when the EDP is uh, the EDP only is working and now the ACMP is just an automatic so the auto logic would kick in and it would allow it to uh, turn back on um yeah i believe that's all i wanted to cover so um we still have the a hydraulic pumps not auto uh hmm, your damper would have turned on that's kind of i guess that's kind of connected uh your damper feeds from uh, uh is taking hydraulics from uh, hydraulic uh, one or three so as soon as either one of them is pressurized your damper should turn on automatically but we can just force it on uh, so, oh, one thing I want to possibly show you guys. So if we uh, go to the EDP and force the hydraulic shutoff, the the hydraulic shutoff valve, the EDP would still be spinning, but we just cut the fluid supply to the system. 
Okay, and now for some reason, yeah, we can see hydraulic shadow valve, uh, hydraulic one shadow valve is closed. Uh, for some reason, the um, yeah, it's it's not uh, pressurizing. Let's see. So EDP is not working. Here we have the low pressure. Um, so it's all good and great, but we are we simply need to force it on. And now we would have pressure again. Uh, I think I think it should have uh, pressurized. Anyway, so those are the systems. Fairly simple. Uh, once we get both. Uh, systems both engines on let's turn on the uh, let's allow the engine pump uh, shadow valve back in so once we've turned off on both engines we would just simply turn the hydraulics to auto like so and unless there's any abnormal this way it would stay for the entire duration of the remaining of the flight uh, once we get on the ground again uh, we can choose to go single engine taxi again so what is it doing over here oh that's right because i didn't actually turn on the second engine my my apologies um once actually let's test it so it's an auto let's see if it actually works like it says it works the the filter that is so let's depressurize and let's turn off the parking brake there it is. Beautiful. So the automatic system kicks in. Okay. And uh, yeah, beautiful job. I feel they're modeling, modeling the system. So uh, this is the way. So after we've landed, we want to go single engine taxi. In my company, we would just simply turn both, system, both systems on. Uh, to uh, on and then as we are shutting down the remaining engine uh, all we have to do is two one and three a back to off okay if we've taxied on both engines we don't ne need to touch it we just taxi in this configuration all the way into the gate once we get into the gate shut down the engine boop, and we are done and that's the essentials of the Embraer hydraulic system a lot of fancy talk to say hey just Put it on it works and if there's no abnormals you can just set and forget it thank you very much guys uh hope it was uh, helpful let me know if it was or if it wasn't or if there's any comments and uh this airplane uh is uh, starting to yell at me for uh beating it too much for you guys so uh i'll talk to you soon in the next video